Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. In order to know more about uh, the government's efforts uh, with regards to social protection measures that took the form of several initiatives, including Decent Life Initiative, Haya Karima, and other initiatives with the aim of improving the lives of the Egyptian citizens and the role of women in this regard, we're very much delighted to have with us here over the phone uh, Dr. Amira Selbeck, Strategic Management and Self-Development Expert. Good day to you, Mrs. Amira. How are you? Good evening and hello to you and all your audience. Thank you very much. Now, to start with, uh, we want to know uh, more about uh, uh, your uh, about you in particular, Dr. Amira. Could you tell us more about yourself? Um, actually, I started my life in one of the good schools in Egypt, which taught me how to be a self-dependent person. Uh, I studied English literature at the beginning, and I worked as a teacher for a while. And then I decided to develop myself and work more on myself. So I traveled to the States and I had my um, master's degree in education field. And then I came to Egypt here and I had my doctorate degree in strategic management. And now actually I am a school director as well as I am a part-time university professor teaching strategic management, marketing and leadership. That's excellent. Now, Dr. Amira, um, uh, back to our topic. Uh, the Egyptian government has been, for the past several years, taking, has been taking several steps towards improving the lives of the Egyptian citizens, especially women. Now, uh, in order to improve the lives of citizens, we started with improving uh, the status of women and the Egyptian family. How do you see that? Okay, let, me, let, us, have, let us look closely to what's happening now in, in the countryside especially. Mm. Now we are having a lot of focus on women in general. Yes. Women are getting trained now to be proactive people, not reactive. In the past, or not, let's say in the, in the few years or some era of Egypt, uh, women were just followers. They were following men, they were following uh, what comes to their way and they can do. They were not proactive people. Mm. Now, with all the awareness that the government is giving to especially the women, women decided to say, okay, I'm a proactive member of the society. I'm not a reactive one. I'm a doer. I'm a subject, not an object. So women in all uh, categories or all social levels, they started to think and feel that, yes, we, we, we can be an added value to the society. In the past, they were not even allowed to do this. Sometimes we were having like blood feeling. No, you are a woman, uh, it's better to be to stay at home, all these things. Now, when especially when we are seeing all the examples, like uh, uh, all the ministers, not the female ministers, all the females, I don't want to mention, but most of the females now who are running or, or who are um, in big posts in Egypt, they are showing the new generation and even the ones who felt that they were not seen, oh, yes, women are having a great role and they are having added value. And this was by the permission of the government that we are allowing women now to run or to hold big positions. So mm. I, as a woman, I, as a woman now, I feel very much supported by my government. I feel that um, I can give myself a hand and I have a hand from the government and I can give other women a hand as well. The government is, is giving now lots of training courses, is providing positions for women, is giving lots of support for even the kids in different places, even in countryside. If a woman wants to work, she has a place to send her kids to. So I think now we cannot say that women are behind in our, in our country now. No, women are not behind. They are getting all the support from the government. They are getting all the resources from the, from the government. Yes, and they are getting support from each other, as you just mentioned now, uh, the, that women can actually support other women. That's what, that's what I really want to focus on now, that I can tell you the big, big, big value that we got from what we are getting from culture, from education about women independence now, is that, okay, ladies, if you learn something, it's your duty to teach it to another woman. I'm, I'm speaking especially about countryside. Now, by the way, in many of the countryside, we are getting like five women or ten women, and we are giving them education, and training, and they are asked to give the training to other five and ten. 
Because now we believe as women, it cannot be a one-man show. You, we can never be strong if we are few women. The mm. strength will be if we are a unity of women, a group, a bunch of women doing the same thing to prove ourselves. Definitely. So yes. What we are getting from the government now to train people as you got trained. You mm. have to give a hand to the women who are in need. In need here, I don't mean financially need. In in need of support. Mm. In the past, by the way, in the past, if you can notice, it used to be men who go to w a countryside and educate ladies. Mm. Now we are sending more of women to be role models to these women. Yes. So yes. when I get trained from someone uh, who can be, who I can see a successful person, who I can see as strong in her post, I say, yes, I can be like that one. We are having, yani, the best thing that we are getting now in our country, uh, and this is something that we really have to admit, we are having lots of exemplary la ladies hmm. who can be, who can give like hope to other women. Now we come even only to get our opportunities. We are having that chance and we are learning how to grab these chances. Exactly, yes. Well, uh, let's take a short break, Dr. Amira. Stay with us. We're going to watch a report about the social protection measures offered by the Egyptian government, and we'll be right back. Great. The coronavirus has widely spread in Egypt and negatively affected people's lives, especially the vulnerable groups. The government, private sectors and social societies had played significant roles in supporting the needed groups to overcome the crisis. Confronting this sudden crisis, the Egyptian government swiftly responded the most by being the first country to empower women and financially support informal workers. However, some flaws appear during operations as a result of poor infrastructure. Women are playing critical roles in supporting households and the growth of the whole country's economy. Egypt was the first country in the region to empower women and protect them from the negative impact of COVID-19. Regarding the COVID-19 Global Gender Response Tracker, the Egyptian Authority took 21 women-related measures, covered three aspects, economic security, combating violence against women, and unpaid care work. Economic empowerment. One, cash transfer. During the pandemic, financial assistance channeled in a couple of ways. One is a pre-existing social protection program, the Careful and Karama program. Another is an emergency grant for irregular workers from the Ministry of Manpower. The Egyptian government added more people to the Careful and Karama program as one of the responses to the pandemic. The Ministry of Social Solidarity has been operating the Tekeful and Karama program since 2015 to transfer cash and other humanitarian aids to low households to improve their lives. This support was exclusive for families with no more than two children in school and receiving education and health care regularly. The Karama or Dignity program targets the elderly, people with special needs, widows and divorced women. The program grants subscribers 450 Egyptian pounds per month. According to the annual report of the Ministry of Social Solidarity, 411,000 new families have been added to the program in 2020 and reached a total number of 15 million individuals. Additionally, some women were granted a 1,500 Egyptian pounds from the Ministry of Manpower to mitigate the negative impact of the pandemic. Moreover, the Egyptian Authority raised the payment for women in the rural areas from 300 Egyptian pounds to 900 Egyptian pounds each month. Number two, the support for women's entrepreneurship and employment. Besides one-off cash transferring urgent measures, the government also set long-term solutions for border and upper governorates employment rates. The Micro, Small and Medium Enterprises Development Agency, MSMEDA, allocated 5.4 billion Egyptian pounds to finance women-related projects. 
It is expected that 216,000 micro-projects will be implemented over five years and 250,000 jobs and projects will be funded through banks and civil society organizations that cooperate with the agency. On the other hand, the government provided various training programs to teach different professions to help them develop their skills and have better employment chances. The social service. With the demands of multitasking working mothers, the Egyptian government had decreed orders to guarantee alleviation in accomplishing their different duties. In March 2020, the Egyptian Prime Minister launched a policy that gave exceptional leave to pregnant employees, nursing workers looking after children under 12 years old and mothers with disabled children. The National Council for Women provided a hotline to receive complaints and supported working mothers to ensure the decree works smoothly. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Still with you in this edition of Women's World, talking about social protection measures with our guest today, Dr. Amira Sobek. And back to you, Dr. Amira. Uh, how do you see the main points of the social protection measures uh, proposed by the Egyptian government under the patronage of President Abdel Fattah Sisi? Okay, I can just say that um, um, the government is just giving some limited and very well defined items that the family can work on, especially the women. These items are um, to motivate women, to support them, to make them uh, go for jobs, actually, and they are opening many places for them. Mm. Um, if you are talking about um, um, uh, any statements that come out from the government, yes. I want everyone to make sure that when the government says anything, they have the study for it. They, mm. are, they are ready for it. They are willing to do this. Mm. What we need from people now is to have the awareness and mm. to understand and to start to follow. For example, one of the things that the, the government is asking now is to limit the number of, of kids in the, in the family. So will that be easy for every family? Two some children, say, per, yes. yes, two children for, yeah. for each family. Yeah. Yes. Mm. Let's say that some families will go for this and some families will not go for this. Yes. The number, the number of families who are starting to say, yes, I have to be part of this puzzle to, to go well, and they started to feel, and what we see now from families is that most of them are like two kids, and even in the countryside, they are doing this. Mm. So they are starting to get this because they can see achievements made by the government. They can see successes happening in front of them. So when the government says or uh, any statement or asks the people to do anything, it is based on what they are ready for and what we really need them. Yes. Exactly. Um, yes. Hmm. Well, I'd like even to thank though, you. Yes, yes. Please okay. go on, Dr. Even, Amir. Even though that we are having limited resources here in the country, like, like, but let me tell you that with the persistence of women, with the persistence of families, with the persistence of people, we are not going fast in our commitment. Yes, we are, we are doing it steady but surely. Hmm. So I can guarantee like in four or five years, these things will show more for the families, which will be a story of success to encourage families and motivate them to follow what they are asked more and more. Yes. Well, uh, I'd like to thank you very much, uh, Dr. Amira Sobek, strategic management and self-development expert. Thank you very much. Uh, that was an excellent interview on social protection measures and the role of women in this regard. Thank you very much for being with us. And uh, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us in this edition of Women's World. I'm Halal Hamalewi signing off for now.